Afternoon everybody. How are y'all doing today? I'm doing just fine. Thanks for asking. It's wickedly hot out here and I cannot wait for winter time. I really can't. Oh, I'm gonna make so many videos in the winter time. So today I have a Stallard Arms little 9mm. It's a S JS9. There we go. JS9. Uh, by Stallard Arms in Mainsfield, Ohio. This is a very interesting little pistol. And and don't don't mind what that white spot there is. <laughs> but this is a very interesting little pistol. It's got a European mag release on it, but it's single stack, very, very heavy. Like this thing is something that you would tie to a rope and use as your boat anchor. It's very heavy. It doesn't lock open on an empty magazine, but there is a very poorly made slide lock, which also serves as a safety. Right here, right here's your safety. Same, same safety lever controls your slide lock, but the slide lock doesn't really work all that well. This thing feels like it's made out of cast iron. I'm pretty sure it's striker fired, but I'm not sure if there's an internal hammer in there. It's a fun little gun. It's a shooter. I bought it for like 60 bucks at the gun store. I'm pretty sure that Stallard Arms is the predecessor to High Point, and that's why this is very similar in appearance to a High Point. But I'm not 100% sure. So what I'll be doing today is I'll be using this monstrosity <laughs> to put some more holes in my grill down there. I've only got today to destroy that grill, so I'm going to I'm going to utilize as much as I can. So I decided to advise another test. Normally whenever I have multiple types of ammunition, I'll make a couple of tests. I got a couple of rounds of seal cased full metal jackets, and I got a couple of rounds of brass cased full metal jackets, and we're just gonna see which one works better, which one cycles better, which one feels better, which one sounds better. Just, we're just gonna compare the two. Now, these are, these, these steel case rounds are very cheap ammo. I know that they're garbage. And the brass case, I know, you know, is a tier above them. But I still want to compare them, just for, just for giggle sakes. So, first thing we're going to do is our steel case. Our first failure. Looks like we had a double cycle. But I'm not sure about that. It might be a fa failure to extract as well. Let's give it a look, shall we? Nope, it was a double cycle. All right, how many rounds did we get through with the steel cased? I had six in there, so we got through four rounds. Two rounds left. a lot of recoil on these. Way more recoil than there should be for a 9mm. Alright, now I'm going to load up six rounds for our brass case and we're going to see just how much of a difference there actually is. We're going to see if it actually cycles as well or if it just bogs up. We're going to see if the gun explodes and blows my hands off, in which case I'll collect disability. <laughs> These are, these are full metal jacket rounds, mind you. They're the same grain, definitely not the same manufacturer, but the same grain. And we're gonna see how much better these work. Ah, oh, they, they feel so much better. Just that one fired already. That's all of them. Not a single failure, and I'm not surprised. I just picked up a brass casing and it was scorchingly hot. All right, on to test number two. I have four different types of ammunition and I'd like to test them all out. So the first type that I'd like to do, I have a non-lacquered steel case. I'm gonna load that in, fire it down, and we're going to see what it's like. Oh, 
All right, I believe that was the Tula Armory. And now we have a lacquered steel case, which is, I'm not sure the brand on this one, CIB, I think. That Tula Armory, that was, that was definitely a low quality bullet. You could, you could feel it whenever you flung it down the range. This one's a little bit higher, but not much. All right, it, it felt considerably better than that non-lacquered steel case. All right, now I'm gonna fire another regular old full metal jacket round in a brass case, just so I have a comparison. Oh yeah, that's, that's a very nice round. Very comfortable to fire. Now I'm gonna fire a full brass nine millimeter round i can't remember where i got this from but it's it's a solid brass bullet and i'm curious to see it go through that grill that one had a lot less recoil than the other ones did but it was still really cool i believe that bullet since it was brass was a lot lighter than the lead bullets so it 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 felt nice it did. And I dropped the bullet. Give me a second. There we go. All right, I got five more rounds of these lacquered steel case before I open up another box. I had like a just a box of random ass nine millimeter ammunition. So here's our steel case. Oh, and this, this firearm, whenever it functions, is relatively accurate. For the most part, like if you go slow, take your time, you'll get decent accuracy out of it, but definitely not precision firing gun. But for what, the 60, 70 bucks that I got it for, it's not bad. All right, well, that's all those. The only issue that I do have with this gun is that it needs to be oiled and cleaned on a regular basis. It's it's a sport shooter. It's definitely not military grade. You can't go hiking through the tundra and, you know, shoving mud into this thing and expect it to still function properly. This thing is a hassle to take apart. The the slide on it is garbage. The trigger pull is the biggest garbage trigger pull I've ever felt. It's worse than the freaking Mosin. It's this, this gun, for the money, it's a good gun. You point it, it goes bang. Huh? Steel cased ammo cycles all right through it. As long as you're not in a combat situation, you should be fine with it. But I haven't had any issues with the brass case. This is my last two brass case rounds. I'm gonna hit the rim on the car. That was entertaining, I guess. All right, before we continue, I say we go check out what these nine millimeters did to that thing. If we can find, you know, the nine millimeter holes. Man, it is really hot out here. Like you just, you can physically see the temperature difference in the heat of the sun and the cool of the shade. Don't get me wrong, the shade is still hot as hell, but there's definitely a temperature difference. Yep, that's still horrifyingly destroyed. Up here, I fired a lot of nine millimeters at this thing. This looks new, so I'm sure a nine millimeter went through there somewhere. Uh, it's hard to tell where around here 9mm went, but I was aiming for this general area. So, I think this one here is new too. This one, this one, this one, this one. You know, typical little 9mm holes. I love the shrapneling though. Just look at all the spots where bullet fragments shattered just every bit of brittle metal on this thing. There we go. I still like how the 45 ACP got stuck right there. 
I'm going to see if I can get that out later on off camera. But that'll be later on off camera. Alright, I'm going to load up some more 9mm and just go to town on that thing. I'm just going to light it up at, you know, $6 or $7 for a box of 50 of these cheap old steel cases. It's a pretty good deal, especially for range shooting. Hmm, is that blood? Where did I cut myself at? I don't feel any pain anywhere. Or is it just from the finger? Eh, it might just be from the finger. Anyway, I'm gonna load up some ammo and fire at that grill some more. I'm pretty sure that this Salad Arms just operates on a simple blowback system, but I can't guarantee it. It's, it's, this gun doesn't mean much to me. <laughs> I never bothered to learn much about it. I mean, I might do it just just because. I mean, just because I have the gun, it might be fun. I might learn something about it, but I don't think uh, I don't think the information I gather would mean anything. I'm better off spending my time learning about High Point. This magazine and this thing holds, I want to say, eight rounds. It's a single stack magazine. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that it holds eight rounds. It doesn't have any round indicators, but it does have little notches on it. <laughs> Why they put those in there, I'll never know. Just seems like extra machining work that doesn't need to be there. But maybe it means something. Maybe that's where they were planning on putting the round indicators, but they just never got around to it. Heh, <laughs> around to it. Da da. Hey, that was funny. That was funny, and you know it. Rapid fire didn't go off so well with this thing. So let's let's pull the magazine if we can. Oh, this thing is really jammed up. There we go. Wow, out of ammo already. Let's grab that round that didn't want to go in there. It's in there now. Nice. I don't like these European magazine releases. I really don't. The reason that these types of magazine releases exist is because Back whenever they were popular in the 1920s, 30s, that time era, probably in the 40s too, I'm sure. Back whenever they were that popular, they were often used with the law enforcement, and a tactical reload system wasn't as necessary back then. Back then, law enforcement wasn't planning on expunging, you know, a hundred rounds in a gunfight. What they were planning on doing was using their sidearms if they had to defend themselves. Nowadays, that's not the case. Nowadays, you know, if you can't reload it in half a second to fire on your enemy some more, <laughs> it's just not useful in combat because everyone else wants to be able to expunge as many rounds as possible in the shortest amount of time to turn their enemies into hamburger as quickly as possible. Well, back whenever these magazine styles were popular, law enforcement would probably probably never foresee that they have to reload very quickly. I'm sure it was a very rare instance where they had to. Now whenever the wars came along, that's whenever they realized, hey, we need to do better. Once semi-auto started becoming widespread adopted, they realized we are being outclassed. And that's, that's where your faster reload systems come in. <laughs> this right here is a very out-of-date reload system. There's a re 
ridiculous amount of recoil in this thing though. It all has to do with the weight of the slide. This 9mm, despite the fact that it's, you know, cheap, relatively accurate, it's very, very heavy. It doesn't hold a lot of ammo for its size. I mean, this thing is absolutely massive. It's almost as big as my 1911. It's holding 9mm, it so only holds 8. Single stack magazine. It's, it's definitely a beast of a gun. And the absolutely massive slide on this thing feels like it's made of cast iron. And it is ridiculously heavy. And as this thing cycles, man, just... <laughs> the recoil is intense. And keep your hands away from the slide at all times. The slide goes down a little bit further than most slides on most other uh, firearms goes down almost to my freaking hand right here normally it's right on the barrel but for whatever reason on this one it's not so you got to pay attention to that while you're firing another double stack seems to be a very common problem in these I'm trying to load five rounds but I can normally only get through three Definitely not a gun I'd want in combat. Don't get me wrong, I would happily take this over nothing. You know, I would take this over nothing any day of the week. You're gonna send me against, you know, gangsters armed with 9mm as well. I would happily take this over being disarmed. <laughs> now, the sights on this thing, I'm trying to talk as much about the gun as I can. The sights on this thing are actually really good for what the gun is. They're fixed on sights, fixed onto the slide. They're, they're, hell, they're a part of the slide. But the sight picture is really good with them. I have no problems aiming down the sights with this thing. That one was a failure to extract. Nice. All right, before we continue, let's go check out that grill again. Yep, that is definitely a grill that has been shot with multiple different calibers. I am certain about it. Well, fairly certain. I don't know, maybe, maybe this isn't what it looks like. <laughs> maybe it's not a grill that's been shot with multiple different calipers. You know, in all retrospect, I probably should have taken this thing off first. Oh well, too late now. Yeah, there's, there's bullet holes in it, so too late now. I ain't worried about it. This thing doesn't open very well anymore, though. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to fire at it while it's open, and we're going we're gonna to just see what these 9mm do. That is a good idea right there. I'm going to fire at this back plate here, see if we can get some shrapneling out into the hood over there, the cover, the top, the lid, whatever you want to call it. All right. I don't have very many 9 millimeters left. I got like 15 of them. And I'm just going to unleash them all on that grill there. So this is the first five. actually managed to get through all five without a, a malfunction or anything. That, that's progress right there. Maybe this gun just needs to be broken in. I, I bought it used, but I have no idea how used it is. Looking at it, it doesn't look very used. I mean, hell, I don't know how old this gun is, but even the rifling in the barrel is relatively decent. So, like I said, who knows how used this thing actually is. Next five rounds. Oh, there we go. Double stack. Nice. Oh, I can't wait to go see how that lid's doing. What shape and condition that lid's in. 
you know, I got bullet casings all over my car. <laughs> I got the camera resting on my car and it's just covered in bullet casings. It's entertaining. Hell, it's downright funny. I'm glad the paint on it's not good, <laughs> otherwise I'd be concerned. All right, here we go, last five rounds. Another double stack. There we go. For whatever reason, it seems to double stack around every three or four rounds. Definitely not a combat weapon. All right, well, that's all my nine millimeters. Let's go see what this grill looks like. All right, now at least we can see where the nine millimeters actually hit. Because normally our bullets, the, the curvature of the impact is going into the grill since we were shooting from the outside. Now we were shooting from the outside or from the inside out. So. Here's 9mm damage, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, about what is to be expected. It's hard to tell on here what sort of 9mm damage there is though, but I'm sure this right here is one of them. So, this was fun. I completely decimated this grill, and I had a really fun time doing it. I'm going to take a little bit of a break, because it is a billion degrees out here. And I'm out of ammo, so there's no point in me staying out here. <laughs> I had fun. If you guys want to see more, please subscribe. Uh, I don't really have any anything else to say other than have a good day, guys. Today was good for me. I sure hope today will be good for you as well.